everybody welcome back to the lifestyles of the soap obsessed i'm your host gypsy joe and we'll be making our halloween soap that we've prepared for for a month now <laughs> so i'm finally excited to get this soap to bed and finally see how the swirls and everything turn out i have it all envisioned in my mind but as we all know you never really can tell how it's gonna turn out. <laughs> so here I have all of my accoutrements, if you would like to call it that. All my soap decorations for the top, how cute! And if you haven't watched my other three video shorts on how to make some of these decorations, please stop right now and go back and watch them. They are super fantastic, if I say so myself. Okay, let's get moving on. So the colors I'm gonna be using are gonna be from the neon set from Crafter's Choice. The first one is neon bright green powder the second is going to be neon house party purple powder and neon nuclear orange powder oh that's that is nuclear orange and we're going to be using black hardwood charcoal from crafter's choice so here i have all my oils melted and ready to go i do have my lye and water solution mixed up here they're both at 75 degrees so as always i like to use a spoon to kind of stir it around and keep the lye from settling at the bottom and causing any any issues and then we're just going to blend to slightly over emulsification we want a really thin tray so that our swirls are nice and deep in the bar as always we're going to burp our stick blender so we're not incorporating a whole lot of air into the mixture that'll keep the air pockets in the final soap to a minimum six pulses or so we got it to a very thin trays as you can see and we're going to begin adding our colorants but first we're going to pull out my handy dandy scale and weigh each color out separately because i want them all to be relatively equal okay so we're going to put roughly 300 grams in each bucket So we're gonna very carefully, I don't know if you've ever worked with charcoal, but it's very fine powder. We're gonna add just a little bit here. Be really careful. Make sure you do use a spoon. <laughs> I have in the past not used a spoon and it's been a disaster. And I want it to be really, really black. So I am gonna add a few, um, I would say probably one and a half tablespoons of the charcoal. And I want these colors to be fairly electric except for the orange. I am going to add some titanium dioxide to that one. So I am going to add quite a heavy dose of mica to each one. Let's take a look and see what that looks like now. Of course I'm going to use my stick blender here just a second so I can get these mixed together. Oh yeah, that's going to be perfect. titanium dioxide down in there to kind of mellow the neon orange out It'll, it should look great so I'm gonna go ahead and blend stick blend a little bit here on low um, from lightest to darkest color <laughs> okay. I did add a light fragrance of peppermint bergamot and grapefruit it smells really really amazing <laughs> I do want to keep the batters really thin because I'm going to pour it a thin trace. I want the ribbons to go really deep far down into the soap and the thinner the trace, the deeper the swirls will be. So I'm just going to put my blender down in there. Oh, careful. I don't know if you can see the smoke kind of popping up from the charcoal. It's really fine powder is the hardwood charcoal. Oh yeah, that's a great look. And I do want to save some for the top. I do want the top to be mostly black. Okay. But I think I do want to add a little bit of titanium dioxide to calm this orange down a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. It's always better to add too little and add more than to add too much and then you're stuck with it 
So yeah, that's perfect. That's really nice. But I can tell that the titanium dioxide is already going to thicken this orange up quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and start pouring right now. My first layer is going to be black just a little bit. I'm trying to do thin ribbons today. Because I do want to do quite as many layers as I can so that it, it has a nice intricate design in the inside. That green though, woo, it's electric. And then I'm gonna run this one down along the outside more and back down this side. And then I'm just gonna continue to repeat the process. start scraping out all my containers and pour the last of that except for the black because I'm gonna put that on the top I don't know if you can tell but I poured this at a really thin trace and it's not thickening it up on me at all I did think that it was going to accelerate some but as you can tell it is just by me shaking it a little bit here it is completely liquid so I'm actually gonna have to let this set up just a little bit before I try to put the rest of my black on top to cover this so right now I'm just being really really delicate because it is still a really really thin trace so I'm trying to break the fall of the soap with my spatula and just cover this all in black that's my goal even though it is really fluid I am gonna go ahead and just put what little black I do have left I only have a, a very small amount I should have saved a little bit more but then again when you use black, a giant, um, just completely black bar in the shower, it does get kind of messy. It does kind of leave the black drops and I don't want to scare anybody off. But I kind of like that there's a few colors peeking through and I'm just gonna go ahead and do a light little swirl on the top to kind of accentuate those and go with it. I really like it. After swirling, I do have almost a completely black top that I'm gonna sprinkle with some super sparkle glitter. Then go ahead and wait for it to harden up a little bit so I can texture the top just a little bit more and add some sanding sugars. Um, it's black sanding sugar, and I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the top and that should give it some really nice texture for my spooky graveyard. <laughs> As you can see, it's kind of set up a little bit. The sheen on the top has kind of lessened. It's got a little bit more matte. So it's got the super sparkle on there. And honestly, I'm so happy with how the top turned out already. I literally could leave it just like it is, but of course we're not. We're gonna be putting our cool embeds on the top. And if you haven't watched my three-part mini series on how to make some of these cool guys, go ahead and make sure you watch those now. Okay, we are gonna add some gray sanding sugar just a little bit down one side um, for where the tombstones are gonna go. I'm gonna put them down into the sanding sugar. I don't want it to be too exfoliating because you know it is very coarse and I'm hoping that it just falls off the top of the bar when the user goes to use it, but I don't want to <laughs> scratch anybody while they're using the product. Just a small line down one side. For some detail and texture. I think it'll be super cute. So the soap has set up just a little bit and I was able to go ahead and get these embeds into one bar. Now I did have to use a pair of chopsticks to do it because I do have a lot going on here and it turns out that my fingers are just too big without touching the other embeds. <laughs> so if you are good with chopsticks go ahead and use them too or you can just use your little fingers. That'll work out just fine. For the larger tombstone embeds, it's not really a problem. Just go ahead and stick them down in the corner there. I 
kind of just grab my pumpkin with the chopsticks and place it where I want. Okay, we are done. I did have a hard time squeezing all the toppings on top. I <laughs> could have used less embeds, but hey. Okay, I'm gonna give you a close-up and we'll let it sit and I'll bring you back for the cut. Here's the close-up. How cute did these guys turn out? You can see just the sanding sugar, a little bit of the glitter there, the pumpkins. I love it. How cute is that? Super happy with how it turned out. Okay, I'll bring you guys back for the cut in 24 hours. All right, everybody. So it's been a couple of days since I actually poured this. It's been about three days. It turns out that environmental factors actually do make a difference in soap making. Um, normally this recipe, I guess, is a relatively hard one and people don't have trouble unmolding it normally the next day so I thought easy peasy I'll go ahead and unmold it the next day but I when I went to go unmold it it was still really super sticky so what I did was I let it sit for an additional two days and even then it was still hard to get out of the mold so I wound up sticking it in the fridge for six or eight hours just to get it firmed up a little bit on the outside and then I removed the mold and let it sit for another eight or so just so it would get a nice crust around the outside so that I could cut through it relatively easy. So okay, here we go. I really like the cut. It's super electric, really cute. And I do have some soda ash on the top. It's really kind of a matte gray right now, but I'll steam it or put some rubbing alcohol and see if I can get it off. It shouldn't be too bad. But here's the back side. I love the colors because we poured it at a super fluid, get that super deep U shape. Love it. These colors are super vibrant. I'm so happy with how they turned out. The coloring is perfect for Halloween. The backside, I love that green. It's awesome, it smells great. The toppings look great. That sanding sugar and glitter turned out perfect. I actually might like the ashy color. I might even keep that because I think that it gives it some differentiation between the black embeds and the top. So I don't know. We'll see. I might keep it. But a few more days I'm gonna let it harden up and then I'll clean up the cut marks here. All right everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the flip side.